Hello and welcome to the Game Dev London podcast. This is a community of people who are absolutely in love with talking about and sharing their love of the details behind making games, whether or not they're based actually in London. Uh, I'm your host, I'm Oscar Clark, he, him pronouns, and I'm on a quest. My quest is to understand everything you wanted to know about Game Dev, but never dared to ask. And to let, today I am absolutely delighted to be joined by my my good friend Lucy. Um, Lucy is a uh, game producer. In fact, tell you what, let me do a quick transition and I can bring Lucy on. Lucy, great to see you. Do you want to tell everybody who you are and what you do? Yes, great to see you, Oscar. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Lucy Prunier. I am French, uh, hence my Twitter handle, French Lucy. Um, I am a game producer, but just to give you a little bit of background on me, how did I get there? Uh, and why is this French person talking to this <laughs> London person? And so um, much time that you spend in the UK as well. Yeah. Exactly. So I, uh, as I like to introduce myself, I studied political sciences, which obviously led me to games. Um, and I first worked in games in uh, Japan, actually, because part of my studies was in Japan and studying Japanese. And uh, so I started in Japan as a translator and a localization manager from English and Japanese to French. Um, and from there, essentially, I met a lot of people working in games and I wanted to be more involved in the games industry, more directly um, uh, in the game development. Uh, and uh, I knew some people who had moved from localization to production uh, in Japan. And essentially, what I did was I moved to London to do that, um, London being such a big hub for the games industry. And uh, so I moved in 2015, and I worked there uh, at two studios, two small studios, where I was a producer. Uh, in particular, I worked at Preloaded, which is based in North London, and makes games with a purpose, so games, for, games beyond entertainment, essentially. Uh, not just serious games, but also, you know, games for museums and, you know, uh, training, etc. Um, on the smallest scale, um, mobile games, VR games, web games as well, uh, with smaller teams. And actually in 2019, I moved back to my native France to try it out um, and to work at Dot Not Entertainment. And I was part of the production team of Tell Me Why, which was released uh, summer 2020. A game we did with Microsoft, much bigger production than what I'd done before. So only part of the production team, so I actually helped some of the teams. Uh, and actually since uh, summer 2020, I've been working on what we call cross-project uh, aspect of Dot Nod. So I work with support teams that support several projects at the same time, because we have several work streams at the same time. And that's me. That's always a tough one, isn't it? Trying to deal with context switching and multitasking and it's kind of funny i forgot you were at preloaded because we've just been doing some work with those guys recently i can't say what the project is it's all hush hush uh i don't even know if it'll come out by the way it's like like a lot of the things i get involved with i get I get involved in lots of things and either kill them off or uh um you know they never see the light of day but that's that's just the the cross i bear for being on the cutting edge all the time um nice. now um so you're talking a lot about kind of how you've gone from that sort of localization, the production roles, and the, and the kind of larger and smaller projects. And, and mm. I think you also worked as a freelance producer for a while as well. Yep. A little bit, um, yep. So, yeah, we, we're going to get to this. But one of the things I always come back to with production is I think it's an absolute essential role. And we actually uh, joke with Ella, my business partner, um, we jokingly called her the chief list maker. Now, some people think that was me belittling. But actually, I think that the ability to create lists being an ability I'm not actually that good at and keep to them is an absolute world changing skill. And, and, and that was actually intended as the highest form of compliment. I'm chief curiosity, but I'm basically useless. I can tell people what to do, but I can functionally do nothing. Uh, it's not quite true, but um, I like to pretend that. Um, so, you know, what is a producer actually going to do you know what is the thing that is a producer why why should we care yeah why should we care it's a very good point thank you oscar uh the first thing i would say is it's scary actually how so many people even in the games industry don't know what a producer does because i mean that's the first problem right yeah. um because a bit like game designer the definition is much more fluid than you might think 
Exactly. That was like, that's always my first point, actually, when someone asks me what I do, because obviously it's actually a, a dreaded question when someone asks me, what do you do? Because I'm like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a video game producer. I say it very clearly because I know it's not something people expect me to say. So and you're the one who raises the money, aren't you? No, I'm not the one raising the money. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, well, I couldn't resist that one. No, but it, absolutely, no, it's a very good point. That's the thing, is I'm not the one who's raising the money, and I'm also not the one cracking the whip, which is a horrible thing that I get a lot. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I'm also not a game designer. I'm also not a marketing director, and I'm also not a PR director. Um, and these are, like, some of the most obvious things I get a lot. Um, so, yeah, the, the first thing is, to be fair, it is annoying because, I mean, annoying. It's normal, but it's quite fluid, and it depends on the studio, so... Is, it, is there one definition? Uh, well, uh, there's one thing really that unites us all producers, I would say, is that uh, I simplify it as, can I swear a little bit, by the way? I haven't asked you. Uh, do you know what? I've never worried about it. So, oh my God. Uh, yeah, I would, You'll have to pardon my you, friend. You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. Um, I we get shit done. Uh, yeah. That's essentially what. Oh, we that do. doesn't count as swearing. That's fine. That's Thank normal. Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> great. Fantastic. Yeah, we get shit done. It's essentially yeah. what we do. I remember asking uh, early on in my career. You know, people. I mean, I still do that. I ask. You know, do you think I'm doing things right? You know, to more senior members, and they'd be like, "You get shit done." You know, yeah. the rest is experience. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's that's a simplest way to say it. I've I've got a pin tweet actually where I've. Um, I've I've summarized what a producer does, and that's way back when it was 140 characters only. And I think it was a, a games producer is a, a get shit done. Um, uh, when shit hits the fan, get a dev to fix the shit. And I think there was another <laughs> sentence. Anyway. Yeah, when shit hits the fan, get a dev to fix I like that. Uh, as a product owner, my, hmm. my job title is it's my fault. Ah, it's well, different. <laughs> it is, but you know, it's actually kind of, I want to say it's true. It is your fault. Yeah. But also when things go wrong, I mean, when things go right, usually people are like, why are you here as a producer? Yeah. And when there's a problem, it's also my fault, yeah. by the way. Well, I mean, uh, I was thinking more as a, as a product owner, but as a, somebody who's responsible for the entire business of the game. Oh, yes. Which is my role, but generally. Yes. Uh, yes. And I, obviously I do a lot of design work. I do a lot of other things, marketing, publishing, all those kind of things. But in general, what you know, you know, if it's, I have to have a holistic view of all of the game, and I have to hold all of it in my brain, and know what the implications are of anything happening. Now, obviously, real people do real jobs. I just have to keep a picture in place. But it's my fault if it goes wrong. It's their success if it goes right. Oh. I don't mean that. I'm not, I don't need sympathy. That's that's the job. That's the burden you take on as a product owner. That is your responsibility. Um, but it's the delight is actually delighting in when you see the dev team producing this amazing code. You see the art team producing this amazing art. You see the production team making sure that's all glued together and happens in a systematic and consistent way. That's that's the sort of joy. And I, I think to me that's sort of the thing I think about when I think about producers is the glue. It is the glue. That's absolutely the glue. Um, not just that, though. Um, and usually we don't get credits either, by the way, very often. No. <laughs> um, we're very much in the same boat in that respect. Yeah. But, um, so what I usually say is really there's this, the, the role of producer is twofold, the traditional role. There's project management and there's people management. Yeah. That's Whatever happens, we're going to do these two things in some shape or form. Exactly. So, right? So project management is really what a project manager does, which essentially means keeping track of what I like to call the triforce of a project, which is the budget, scope, and time. Yeah. Oh, because if you that. touch, yeah, if you touch any of them, it impacts the others. So essentially, yeah, you can't the magic triangle. Yeah. yeah. So it's keeping track of that and making sure that we're on time, we're on budget, and we're on uh, we're uh, on scope. But what does that actually mean in practice? Now, I, yes. I kind of I have my views. I'm sure you have your views. But we talk about the triangle. I mean, some of this talk about that triangle. Yep. That triangle is actually hugely important because it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's almost like a real politique in terms of development. It's like the yep. reality yep. that we struggle with constantly. And yep. each of those parameters wants to scale. Mm, exactly. Absolutely. So, you always we... want more time. You always yeah. want more people. You always want more budget, more scope. Well, the yeah. thing is, um, 
you know, it's actually really funny because there is actually I would I would want to start with something a little bit philosophical, but it's it's actually really good to have limitations because it forces you to release something. Yeah. Um, I remember actually it was the production director at Don't Mud. I think he he tweeted that. I think it was him tweeting and not retweeting. Either way, he tweeted that thing where it was like this question. You know, these questions you get on Twitter so that people can interact. And the question was, if you had unlimited time, what kind of game would you make? And he said, no game, because yeah. then no game would ever get finished if you don't no, have yeah. limits. Exactly. Exactly. So that's my first, you know, cool answer. Um, I like that. Answer. Uh, Yes. What was your question? Because I had my cool answer. Well, it was talking about the triangle. So yes. we talk about the triangle. We talk about the fact there are But what does it actually mean to control yes. that triangle? Yeah. So essentially, someone's going to want to pitch in something. There's two things, essentially. Either a, a problem's going to arise. I mean, because problems arise. Whatever happens, there will be a problem, and there will be change. I don't know time. what you mean. I've never had a problem. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, I don't know about the game. <laughs> I mean, I've, I had that conversation with someone recently, you know, on a team being like, I wish I could be on a production where, you know, there was no problem and, you know, we set things right at the start and then, you know, we wouldn't be like, but we talked about this a year ago and I'm like, I'm sorry, dude, but that does not happen. <laughs> We're humans. There's going to be mistakes, things forgotten, good intent, but, you know, um, that's what hell is paved of, um, as we say. So well, that, that's why I have the long running joke in my head. It's not, it's a bit of a dad joke, but... There's only one thing worse than game development, and that's not making games. Oh, I think it's adorable. <laughs> okay, it's, it could be it, adorable. It's also really sad, but yes. It's also really sad. Yes. I, I, lo I love making games, but it is full of problem solving. Yes. You know, at the end of the day. Yes. And yes. I think this is what designers and yes. producers have in common. Our jobs are yes. to solve problems. Yes. That actually, yes. Todd Ty Kelly, who's a good mate of mine, he was writing a book. I don't, I don't know if he ever finished it, but um, he was writing a great book. I got to have a first read of uh, one of the early drafts. And um, he talked about actual game design isn't about making games. It's about mm. reducing cost. Now, he was being flippant. It was a kind of joke, but actually... But it's true. It's, really true about it yeah. it's completely true absolutely um uh james Walsop, actually the um, uh, he was the lead designer at preloaded uh when yeah. i was there i remember he, yeah. he he um we had a meeting like the production team and the design team and he essentially said essentially the production team is our best friend and i thought it was oh um but he said yeah and we have to help them as well it was a moment where i think for some reason we needed support and some designers helped a lot because they are the most problem solvers with us to some extent, coders as well, of course, because it's you know coders but right or wrong. But it's kind of problem. I mean, yes, you want. So uh, I think um, artists have to solve visual communication mm. problems. Mm. Coders have to make sure that the experience flows. Mm. UX people have to make sure that the journey works. We're all solving different kinds of problems. I think mm. designers are about helping understand where the fun is. 